It's time now for at least in local news. In the news, the Wayne County Commissioners continue their search for the next county administrator. After an executive session Monday evening, commissioners announced they narrowed the list of candidates down to the final three. They announced that the plan is to have a second round of interviews with the final three candidates. Local candidate Paul Drotty is still in the running and the only local candidate in the field of three. Drotty currently working as an investigator with the local district attorney's office. Two other candidates are from Brunswick and Midway, Georgia. Freddie Howes from Midway. He served as Director of Emergency Services in Bryan County since 2012. Third candidate is Joseph Michael Kaysen from Brunswick, Georgia. He runs his own business called Parable Financial Network and served as Camden County's Executive Director of their Public Service Authority from 2018 to 2022. Once again, the three names made public this week, and it's down to the final three list. Once again, the plan from the commission is to hold a second round of interviews before making an announcement on who will land the job. County Clerk Amanda Hanna has been serving as administrator until a full-time administrator is hired. Again, Ed Jeffers, former administrator, resigned after the first meeting of this year. Commissioner Tim Hopkins puzzled and disappointed in the action taken Monday night concerning the well at J.C. Fairgrounds. The well is in Commissioner Hopkins' district, and Monday night he made a motion to accept a $9,000 bid to put in a new well. That motion seconded by Commissioner James Boo Thomas. Chairman Kevin McCrary stated that the bid process had not been followed and needed to be put out on bids to make it a fair process. So Hopkins rescinded his motion and then motioned that it be advertised and sent out for bids. And that motion was defeated 3-2 with Kevin McCrary, Mike Gordon, and Jamie Hickox voting against that. question remains who as well is it and who's responsible for the repair. Chairman Kevin McCrary insists that the Altima River and Leisure Authority, which was created, should pay for the well. Hopkins and Commissioner Thomas disagreed. They say it's the county's well and they are responsible. Once again, when Commissioner Tim Hopkins asked it to be put out for bids, his motion to do just that was voted down 3-2. So the $64,000 question after Monday's county meeting is, will the well be replaced or repaired? And if so, who will actually pay for it? Once again, we'll continue to follow the story as it develops, but we've talked with several on the River Committee who say they're not responsible for the well. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages. So please stay tuned. In other news, the City of Jessup Mayor and Council will wrap up their planning retreat today down on Jekyll Island at 12 noon. And it's a three-day retreat. On Wednesday's agenda was a discussion about city projects, funding for the Cracker Williams Pool, discussion about their new fire station on Pine Street, and discussion about the upcoming SPLOS vote, which the county commissioners say will take place either this November or in March of 2024. The county has to negotiate with the three municipalities of Jessup, Odom, and Scriven to decide which projects will be listed on the referendum for the voters to vote on. Courthouse security and the community center have been topics discussed, but nothing has been finalized. Once again, the city's retreat on Jekyll ends today at 12 noon. Wayne County Chamber of Commerce getting ready for their post-legislative luncheon. It's going to take place Thursday, April 20th. Doors open that day at 11 a.m. at Coastal Pines Technical College for a buffet lunch, and the program will begin around 11.45. On hand to recap, the session will be State Senator Blake Tillery, along with State Representative Stephen Meeks and Buddy DeLoach. Tickets on sale now, $25 for members, $35 for non-members. Everyone's invited to attend. Once again, that is Thursday, April 20th. For tickets and more information, call the chamber at 427-2028. Minor, we've got State Representative Stephen Meeks on Monday's Butch and Bob Show. Chamber also selling tickets for the 14th Annual Taste of Wayne, a night at the races. The date of that event is Thursday, April 13th from 6 to 10 p.m. Tickets are $50 for chamber members, $75 for non-members. Everyone invited to the big event, the date Thursday, April 13th at Coastal Pines Technical College. Plenty of food and fun. The silent and live auction will be held. Chamber also selling raffle tickets with prizes of $250, $500, $750, and $1,000. You do not have to be present to win. If you need tickets or more information, call the chamber. Again, the number 912-427-2028. On Tuesday, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp vetoed a bill that would require legislative approval before state universities could raise tuition or fees by more than 3%. That power typically belongs to the Kemp-appointed State Board of Regents. The veto means it will continue to be the executive branch and lawmakers that make the final call on the University System of Georgia decisions. And as part of a broader feud between state senators and the higher education system that intensified this year over the backlash involving a $105 million taxpayer funded tech upgrade for the Medical College of Georgia that could benefit Wellstar Health System. Lieutenant Governor Burt Jones saw the spending as a giveaway and led the Senate to cut $66 million from the higher education budget. He had his own beef with Wellstar also, since the medical system objected to a proposed private hospital that could have benefited his family. The 40-day Senate debate on the state's $32.4 billion budget, which passed easily, focused almost entirely on the massive state budget for Georgia colleges and universities and who gets to make major decisions about it. 
governor's veto this week cited the separation of powers established by the state constitution and its rejection did not surprise legislators. But the quick veto sent another message that the governor is ready to rein in even fellow GOP lawmakers if he thinks they have overstepped his executive powers with their own. We'll be back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor, the commercial messages. So please stay tuned. Final notes and news, the Jessup Community Blood Drive, sponsored by the Jessup Shriners Ladies Auxiliary, set for Calvary Baptist Church on Monday, April 17th from 1 to 6 p.m. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, they ask you to please visit redcrossblood.org and enter Jessup to schedule an appointment. Once again, the Blood Drive, Monday, April 17th from 1 to 6 at the Calvary Baptist Church Gymnasium. Wayne County Board of Tourism hoping to have their annual paddle run on Saturday, April 15th. They continue to monitor the river level. They said it has to be 9 feet or below in order to have the paddle run. Once again, the projected date right now, April 15th. If you need more information, call the Wayne County Board of Tourism at 912-427-3233. The Board of Tourism also getting ready for their inaugural Jessup Porch Fest. It's going to be a music festival held on the porches and lawns of historic homes and churches in the Old Town neighborhood of Jessup, ordered by Brunswick Bay, Wayne, and Plum Streets. Set for April 22nd from 2 to 5 p.m. Local musicians will be performing and allowing visitors to enjoy music from different venues, traveling by golf carts, Bicycles are on foot between the different host sites, modeled after Porch Fest from around the country and more closely by Brunswick's event. This event will spotlight local talent as well as Jessup's local history. In its first year, the Porch Fest committee plans to feature 12 sites with 12 performances. Again, they'll have a map with times, places, and designated parking areas, which will be available for visitors and information tent will be set up on the corner of Brunswick and Plum Street, adjacent to First Baptist Church. If you're interested in performing, if you need more information, again, contact Heather Altman at the Wayne County Board of Tourism Office. That number is 912-427-3233. We can stop by the Jessup Train Depot, and the Just Porch Fest is set for Saturday, April 22nd from 2 to 5 p.m. That's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan, have a great day. <laughs> 